This is podcast number three of the series on management rules to detect melanoma. And we keep going with rule number five, excise doubtful nodular lesions. In fact, missing nodular melanoma represents the worst nightmare for a clinician. Clinically, nodular melanoma usually lacks the classic ABCD criteria and may mimic benign tumors including dermal neva, vascular tumors, dermatofibroma, seborrheic keratosis. Dermoscopically, the classic criteria of melanoma may also be missing since most of them have been described in the context of superficial spreading melanoma. The addition of the blue-black rule, namely the presence of blue and black color within the lesion, has been shown to enhance discrimination of nodular melanoma from benign nodular tumors. Milky red areas and polymorphous vascular pattern have been described to characterize nodular melanomas lacking significant pigmentation. Accordingly, nodular tumors positive to the blue-black rule or exhibiting milky red areas and or polymorphous vascular pattern should be definitely excised. In our estimation, even if with the addition of these rules, some nodular melanomas may still be overlooked. Our suggestion is thus very straightforward. When evaluating a nodular tumor, a clinician should rather look for the presence of criteria of a benign lesion, and when a safe diagnosis of a benign tumor is not feasible, then the lesion should be excised while follow-up is strongly discouraged. Um, clinical and demoscopic examination of this tumor, for example, allows the diagnosis of a cherry angioma with great confidence. In contrast, the, in contrast, the nodule shown here is more difficult to interpret. Clinically, the differential diagnosis included irritated seborrheic keratosis, traumatized dermal nevus, and pyogenic granuloma, but the lesion was excised because demoscopically the features were not typical enough to allow a final reliable diagnosis. Subsequent histopathologic examination revealed a nodular melanoma with a thickness of 3.2 millimeter. Rule number six is combine clinical and demoscopic criteria. Demoscope represents a clinical tool and demoscopic characteristics should be always interpreted within the context of the clinical examination. For example, the lesion shown here, uh, a recently appearing solitary and growing lesion on the leg of a 55-year-old woman, is characterized by a relatively innocent dermoscopic pattern. The clinical presentation of the lesion's history indeed contradict the dermoscopic features of a benign-looking lesion, and this contrast should prompt a biopsy. As a rule, benign lesions are characterized by a certain harmony between clinical characteristics and demoscopic features, with demoscopic ex examination revealing more or less expected findings. Lesions lacking this kind of correlation should be carefully managed, and when the clini clinical scenario is, is strongly suspicious, the lesion should be eventually excised, even in the absence of clear-cut melanoma-specific demoscopic criteria. The final rule is combine clinical and histopathologic criteria. While histopathologic examination is the gold standard for the diagnosis of melanocytic lesions, similarly to any other diagnostic method, is not free of lim limitations, technique failures and subjective misinterpretation. Spitzoid tumors, for example, represent a characteristic uh, uh, category of the diagnostic limitation of histopathology, underlining that the final diagnosis requires a careful evaluation of combined clinical, demoscopic, and, demosc and histopathologic information. Similarly, lesions exhibiting a high degree of regression features may be difficult to interpret histopathologically. This is an extensively regressive lesion, melan melanocytic lesion that was initially interpreted as a nevus on histopathologic examination. After a re-evaluation in the light of the combined clinical, demoscopic and histopathologic features, 
a final diagnosis of melanoma in situ was then established. Apart from the technical issues, one should consider that a clinical and demoscopic difficult lesion is very likely to be equivocal also histopathologically, especially if the pathologist is not provided with the relevant clinical information. As a rule, histopathologic reports should be interpreted in the context of the clinical information, and the diagnosis of a lesion lack lacking satisfactory clinical histopathologic correlation should be managed with caution. In conclusion, rather than considering dermoscopy as a second level diagnostic proce procedure, clinicians should integrate this tool with all relevant information raised by the whole clinical examination. The suggested seven management rules might be helpful in narrowing the gray diagnostic zone and in enhancing the detection of melanomas that do not fulfill the standard morphologic criteria.